This is the season where the author Charles Dickens set the stage for his immortal tale, A Christmas Carol. It is here from where we find reference to this week's creature. Seasons, greetings, and Happy New Year to everyone out there in the YouTube multiverse. Rod here. Today's monster, if you haven't guessed it yet, is the Spectre. In holiday stories like this, we are indulged with a fine use of character building. But unlike the Spectre Jacob Marley, who has come to warn the hard-hearted Ebenezer Scrooge that if he don't change his lawful evil ways and become more lawful good, then he too will be faced with the same fate and be bound to the baggage of his stingy and unforgiving ways. Now the specter in Dungeons and Dragons is the angry undead who is bound to this plane. Most of the time there is a horrific reason for the specter not to pass on into the afterlife. This is most often a cause of a violent death. For example, an innocent person is murdered, resulting from an unjustified stabbing, or even worse, a brutal beating, and they are left for dead. While they lie there, helplessly drawing their last breath and drowning in their own fluids, face first in the gutter, in the unsavorably or abandoned parts of, say, Greyhawk or even Waterdeep. Now, this uncorporeal form has often been mistaken for a ghost who haunts the locations where they met their end. The specter has the appearance of its prior self or its former living self. Uh, showing the graphic signs of its death and still wearing the same clothing that it died in. The specter can easily be recognized by anyone who had seen a painting or knew them in life. Now, they are repulsed by the sun because the sun in the eyes of a specter is a symbol of life and therefore they will only come out in darkness. The nighttime is when the ground that we walk on is the furthest from the sun. And that's when the undead come out to be known to the mortal world. And the specter can thrive in the darkness. Unlike ghosts, when the cause of its death has been dealt with, the ghost can leave this plane and go on. The living only remind the specter of the one thing it can never have again. Now this causes great pain and anger in the specter, causing them to lash out and inflict its vengeance on the living. Now, specters are immune to several forms of attacks. Now, this includes acid, all forms of cold, fire, lightning, thunder, and other spells. All normal maces, axes, swords, daggers, or even javelins have no effect on them as well. So, the only way the normal person can inflict physical damage on a specter is through a plus modified weapon. No matter how many lives a specter takes, its thirst for life will never be quenched and its intense hatred and anger toward the living will only continue to grow stronger. Even if the life that took it is ended, or lives, it will never have the one thing it thirsts for the most, and that's life of its own again. The only way that I know of to lay a specter to rest is you have to destroy its soul. So until this happens, the specter is doomed, forever forced to walk on the material plane. Now whatever you do, Try as hard as you may, do not get touched by the specter. Or you yourself will become their undead servant. Tell me in the comments below, 
how you would use the Spectre or are using the Spectre in your campaign. I really want to know what backstories you have for them. Now, all of our reference materials are listed down below. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up and engage me in conversation. If you like our content, watch this video over here on tea staining. I think you'll like it. Until next time, thank you for watching. Now grab that D8 and roll damage.